Should the Ravens use Devin Duvernay like the Bears used to use Devin Hester? What are your expectations for when Rashad Bateman makes his return? Can Lamar Jackson become the best quarterback in the league? These and more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can just send it directly on Patreon. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz, and if not, that's cool because you already know it's still love anyway. Team Keep It Clean, as we always do, we got some fire questions. Let's do it. First question came from Makai. It said, oh, <laughs> said not really a question, but it's really refreshing hearing you talk about other teams. After hearing you talk about Gilmore, hope you do it more. Keep up the great work. Appreciate that, Makai. Thank you. Um, it, is, uh, it, it is fun. To, to dive into other teams besides the Ravens. Because, of course, you know we primarily a Ravens channel and whatnot. But um, that's part of what Team Keep It Clean is. Because when we do talk about other teams, talk about other teams respectfully, talk about other players respectfully, it ain't like, oh, I hate this team. I hate that. No, it ain't none of that. Because uh, everybody's welcome here. This channel is just about having fun, talking football, making sure we have a welcoming environment for fans of every single team that there are. Um, but I appreciate you acknowledging that. Thank you, man. Next question came from Ray. He said, hey, I just thought of this idea that the Ravens could use Devin Duvernay like how Chicago Bears use Devin Hester. Five ways the Ravens could use Devin like Bears use Devin. I uh, see the little word play because of the name. Anyway, one, as a punting kick returner, man, this has a check mark already. Boom. All right. Number two, out of the backfield. Now, that would be something because he is built like a running back. That would be something. And maybe, well, you know, this, this running game ain't been what the running game once was. Hopefully they pick it up and get it back there. But it hasn't been what it once was. So maybe you could try it out. Couldn't hurt. Three, as a flanker. Four, as a slot receiver. I believe they've done that a little tiny bit already. Uh, and then five, as a red zone threat. Hmm, that would be something. So, yeah, we'll see how uh, Greg Roman continues to use Devin DuVernay in different ways and get him involved. Uh, in the football game. Next question came from a guy, Connor G. He said, good morning. Hope all is well for you. With, with Bateman and Boykin and Boyle, uh, when they all come back, what will the passing game look like? And could you see us signing David DeCastro? Hope all is well. Have a great day. Now, I, I don't see the Ravens signing David DeCastro. But uh, with Bateman and Boyle and Boykin all coming back, our own three Bs. And we still got Le'Veon Bell now. We got Marquise Brown. So we got plenty of Bs on it. Anyway, but speaking of these guys... Specifically, first off, Rashad Bateman. What can we expect when Rashad Bateman makes his debut? Well, I would say to temper expectations. because And, and I love how uh, Torrey Smith said it best. He said Ravens fans, just, they got to make sure they're patient with Rashad Bateman. Because you got to remember that he's not coming back after having missed a year with this Ravens offense. This is not like his second or third year with this team. He's a rookie. So it's important that we remember that he's a rookie. This is his first year. These will be his very first NFL games. So he, I'm sure he's excited. He's hyped and all that. He's ready. But he could have the jitters. It could happen, especially if it happens on Monday Night Football. But it, it just, we, we got to temper expectations. And, and don't, I mean, it's okay. Whatever you expect, it is what it is. But me, Personally, I'm not going to come in and expect him, all right, his first game of the year, he about to go for five catches, 104 yards, and two touchdowns. Now, that would be nice. That would be, ooh, that would be great. But I don't expect it. I don't expect him, to, I don't expect Greg Roman to be like, all right, here, take this big dose of Rashad Bateman and start pouring it all into the offense. No, I expect Greg Roman to sprinkle him, sprinkle him in the offense here and there, here and there, because... You don't want, not that you would mess it up, because it could enhance it, especially once he gets comfortable, it could enhance it. But you don't want to fix what's not broken. The offense, specifically the passing offense, has been doing a very, very good job. A very good job. Now Rashad Bateman, once he gets his feet under, once he gets comfortable and everything, he could make it even better. Even better. And think about this. Like This, this Ravens passing offense is already really good. Especially for what we're used to. 
it could be even better when you add a Rashad Bateman. Now, Miles Boykin, with him, my expectation with him when he returns is that I feel like, and again, we got to see it to believe it, but I feel like we could see a different Miles Boykin. Reason being, because coaching makes all the difference in the world. It makes such a big difference. You could have this player, player A, and this player A could have come out of college and been this phenomenal player, but they get with this coaching staff, and it's like, oh, man, what happened to that guy? He used to be so good in college. Oh, man, he was one of the top players in high school. This dude was phenomenal, but what happened? But that player A moves on from that first set of coaching that he got in the NFL, which didn't really bring out the best of him. Then he moves on to a new coaching staff. And it's like, oh, who's that? Where he come from? I didn't know he was that good. Oh, no, you, you did. But you forgot because the coaching staff that he was with, they didn't bring out the best of him. So hopefully with TT and Kiki, with Miles B, they really bring out the best in him. Seriously. Um, because they have already shown that the, the impact on this offense has been crazy in a good way. You see it. You see it every week. You see it every week. So I, I just I, I'm, I'm very excited to see Miles Boykin and see what he can bring to the table as a receiver, not just a blocker, because we know that he can he, you know, he's going to knock somebody on their butt. We know he's going to block his behind off. But I want to see what he brings to the table now as a wide receiver. See, I want to see Keith Williams and T. Martin's impact on that with him. Nick Boyle. I think Nick Boyle, his biggest impact will be in the running game. Because he gives you that tight end, a physical tight end, very, very strong tight end, um, that, that presence. And it's like having an extra offensive lineman. He gives you somebody that's reliable. His hands are reliable. He ain't catching like no 90, 100 passes like no Mark Andrews. So, but his hands are very reliable. When he does have the ball thrown his way, he'll make the play. Um, he is not afraid of contact. He ain't afraid to dish it. He ain't afraid to take it. Nick Boyle is a very physical tight end. But he will help elevate this running game that much more. So I'm, I'm really just excited when these guys come back. Um, it's crazy because... The, the, it's just crazy how the depth has just been tested like like crazy this season uh, Because the Ravens came in to this year with such a uh, stacked roster Their roster is just amazing But injuries just messed so much stuff up But still, their roster still, with all the injuries, is still pretty good And the way that they've been performing It shows like even, the, even with a depleted roster that they can mess with anybody Next question came from a guy, Devontae. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? I got something on my mind, and I need you to tell me if I'm tripping. Lamar has been getting tremendously better just with playing the QB position. He'll never be the best pure thrower of the football, but I don't really care about that, honestly, because his spirals have gotten tighter, and he can make every throw in the route tree, so that's really good enough. But I've been noticing his eye manipulation and his reads are taking a step forward, which is great to see. Hmm. You know what? I didn't even notice that. Because when we're watching the games, we'll be watching them and whatnot, but then we'll be on the live stream and messing with the chat and all that and going back and forth and trying to get ourselves together. But I haven't even noticed that. So if he's been doing that, that, hey, okay now. But the thing, too, he has actually been doing that since his rookie year. Because I remember specifically there was a play in the Raiders game where he used his eyes to move either a linebacker or a safety. Um... I forgot what, what happened on the play. I think it ended up being an incompletion. Uh, but it was just, oh, no, I think that uh, I think it might have actually been an interception. But it wasn't to the guy who he moved off with his eyes. Because he threw it. Lost. I forgot what it was. But anyway, he's been doing this since his rookie. But anyway, uh, he said, with that being said, does Lamar have the chance to really be the best quarterback in the league? We know his legs are elite running back status, but it seems like his arm and mentor are catching up with his legs. Once he puts it all together, I don't see how anyone can be better. It's like when he plays the theme song that comes to my head. How do you want it? How do you feel? LOL, the man can really give it to you any way. True dual threat. Now, nah, but thanks for reading this, and I hope you and the fam stay blessed. Hey, you never know. With Lamar Jackson, the sky is really the limit. Um, He's shown, like... He could throw with the big boys, man. He's shown you that. He could obviously run with the big boys. He's shown you that, but he could, he could throw with the big boys, too. 
And it's something that a lot of us have been talking about already. But that, that we knew we knew Lamar could throw. We knew. But the media could sort of mess with your head and make you think that he can't throw. The media will mess with your head and make you think that he doesn't have a good arm. Even Madden, man. Man, I was upset the other day. I was, I was playing Madden. And Hollywood, he beating these corners for me in Madden. So I tap on X, lob it up to him, throw a deep ball. And, it, and Lamar's throwing it short. I'm like, what? What is this? Why Lamar keep throwing it short? So I looked at his throw power and it's like a 93. I'm like, what? A 93? Now, I ain't expecting no 97, nothing like that. But like at least a 94, 95, man. 93, what's that, man? So when, when I was throwing the, the deep passes, I got to get like a running start to throw them. And stuff. I'm like, man, come on. I ain't supposed to have to do that. I'm supposed to be able to sit in the pocket and just throw it. But anyway, at least in real life, he could, he could throw those deep passes. Um, but Madden, they, they got to fix that. Anyway, um, so yeah, he, he could be though. He could be. Um, but like I said, the media, they'll, they'll have you thinking one thing about Lamar Jackson that is completely false. That's why it's very important. Like my guy Devontae has shown that he does. Watch the games for yourself. The last question on this episode, a question from subs, came from Keisha. She said, hey, uh, I've been watching content for a while now and just want to thank you and all the patrons for quality Ravens discussions. Uh, keep up the good work. Hey, I appreciate that, Keisha, and we, we appreciate it too. See, even Keisha, she gave a shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons as well. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for that, and, and thank you for being a part of uh, Team Keep It Clean. Thank you for watching the videos, and, and thank you for everybody. Uh, for just really making this what it is. These questions from subscribers, they don't come from me. They come from Team Keep It Clean. They come from y'all. Uh, they come from the patrons. They come from everybody else. They come from y'all. And and the fact that you guys, like I always say, with questions from subscribers, that has been a series that has really um, been big because it has brought out so many points that I would have never thought of, that I would have never seen. It's, it's helped me to learn so much. Um, just as a fan of football itself, it, it's, it's helped um, just my thought process with a lot of different things. It's changed my viewpoints on a lot of different things. It's opened up my mind to a lot of different things. And that's that's because of y'all. So I appreciate you all.